You know, we've looked at a lot of aspects of G.I. Joe this year. We've barely looked at the part of G.I. Joe that's most important to me. I know people like G.I. Joe for lots of different reasons. As a reviewer, I've looked at the science fiction stuff. I've looked at the neon colors. I've looked at the space aliens. That's not what G.I. Joe is to me. This week, we're going to get back to G.I. Joe's roots. We're going to peel back the layers of cheap gimmicks and garish colors and look at its heart. I think we'll find the heart of G.I. Joe here, in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle, baby. When I review G.I. Joe toys from the fantasy side of the toy line, I struggle to find positive things to say about them. To me, those toys miss the point of G.I. Joe. The very name G.I. Joe tells us what it is. No matter how far into outer space G.I. Joe goes, it's still a military toy line. The military theme is the very reason it exists. In many ways, G.I. Joe was a way to learn about the real world. The file cards were filled with real world references. The accessories were often modeled after real equipment. But for me, the education went both ways. Learning about the real world was a way to learn about G.I. Joe. I owned staff of books about military weapons, vehicles, and aircraft, and learning about those things gave me a deeper understanding of the G.I. Joe world. To me, the lasers, the spaceships, and the science fiction stuff was boring. That was just made up stuff. The military toys were real. At least, they seemed real to me at the time. I know I'm not the only one who loves the military G.I. Joe toys, and this week we get to unapologetically indulge in our side of G.I. Joe. No neon, no lasers, HCC 788 presents Recondo. This is Ricondo, G.I. Joe's Jungle Trooper from 1984. This figure was first available in 1984 and was also available in 1985. It was discontinued for 1986. This is one of my favorite figures from a pretty spectacular year. We got a lot of great figures in 1984. Did Ricondo have a predecessor on the G.I. Joe team? In 1983, Gung Ho was a jungle warfare training instructor, according to his file card, but he wasn't a designated jungle trooper. Did Ricondo have a replacement after the figure was no longer available? Well, there were a lot of figures equipped for jungle fighting, both before and after Ricondo was released, but they were weren't usually specifically designated as jungle troopers. G.I. Joe was always prepared for jungle fighting and had plenty of members that could fit that role. The second version of Rakondo was from the Tiger Force subset. He was the pilot of the Tiger Fly, which was the Tiger Force version of the Dragonfly helicopter. Rakondo took over the role of Wild Bill, another hat wearing Joe with a mustache. There are some peculiarities with the file card for Tiger Force Rakondo. I won't delve into that until I review that figure. Does Rakondo have a Cobra counterpart? Well, sort of. The closest is the Range Viper from 1990, Cobra's Wilderness Troopers. Cobra didn't do camouflage very well. Even the Range Viper is not camouflaged for jungle fighting. Of course, Rakondo was off the pegs long before the Range Viper was introduced. Rakondo was sculpted by Bill Merkline, and in fact, Rakondo was the first G.I. Joe figure Mr. Merkline sculpted for Hasbro. Bill Merkline was responsible for the sculpting work of a lot of popular characters from 1984 and several years thereafter. The word Rakondo is a combination of two words, reconnaissance and commando. It also refers to graduates of Rakondo School, the U.S. Army's training program for long-range reconnaissance reconnaissance in enemy territory. Let's take a look at Rakondo's accessories. He didn't have a lot of accessories, but the ones he had were appropriate. Let's start with his weapon. Uh, the card contents called this an M1 4E2X rifle. It is olive drab green. To the best of my knowledge, this rifle is based on the Beretta BM-59 Mark III. It's a variant of the BM-59 with a wooden body, a metal folding stock, and a pistol grip. 
It also has a folded up bipod and some sculpted wrapping all around it. This is a unique weapon. It looks like Rikondo has customized it for his own use. I appreciate the bipod being sculpted on and non-removable. Removable bipods were more trouble than they were worth. This plastic can be brittle. They seem to have used the same brittle light green plastic that was used on earlier G.I. Joe figures. It's very easy to break the barrel, the grip, or the stock. Let's look at Rikondo's only other accessory, his backpack, which the card contents call a cross-country backpack. And here is another cross-country backpack. Eh, it's too late to change my mind about this joke, isn't it? This backpack is olive drab green, the same color as the rifle. It has what looks like it's supposed to be a metal frame and a canvas backing. It's got a sculpted on canteen and a bedroll. You might be able to fit this handle on the top of the backpack in the figure's hand, but I would not recommend it. Uh, it's a little bit thick and you might break the figure's thumb or you might break this brittle green plastic of the backpack. There's a variant of these accessories with a slightly different shade of green. The difference is subtle enough that I'm not interested in tracking it down. The color of Rikondo's hat will match the shade of the accessories he came with. They were probably molded the hat and the accessories together. These accessories were released in Battle Gear Accessory Pack number 3 in 1985 in a tan color. The accessory pack accessories are almost the same color as Rikondo's uniform and look really good on the figure. You may prefer the tan equipment over the green. I still prefer the green because it adds some color interest. Let's take a look at the articulation on Rakondo. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures in 1984. So he could turn his head from left to right. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed him to swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Rikondo starting with the head and this head is spectacular. He has an olive drab green hat with the brim on Rikondo's left side pulled up. Uh, we can see a sculpted band that goes over the crown of the hat pulling up that side of the brim. This is an Australian bush hat which is a style of slouch hat. Australian soldiers are known for pinning one side of the brim of their hats up like this. In addition to that wicked cool hat, Rikondo has brown hair. It looks a little longer than regulation. Then he has a mustache, a brown mustache. It uh, looks like this is supposed to be a handlebar mustache. The portrait on the file card makes it look that way. A hat like this was featured in the 1960s 12-inch G.I. Joe Australian Jungle Fighter, which was in the Action Soldiers of the World subset. The 12-inch Australian figure was very likely an influence on the design of Rikondo. He has the hat and a very similar color scheme. In Action Force in the UK, Rikondo was released in 1985. Their version of Rikondo was Australian. On his chest, he has an open collar. Looks like he's left about the top three buttons undone. He has a khaki shirt. He has a brown pistol holster on his left side with a black pistol in it. It's positioned to be drawn with his right hand. Attached to that pistol holster, he has a brown strap that goes over his left shoulder. He also has a brown strap with a buckle that runs from the holster over his right shoulder. And those details do continue around to the back, so that's nice. Also on his chest, uh, right above the pistol, is a black parachutist badge. The details on the shirt are all sharp. The pockets, the collar, the holster, they all feel real. For his debut figure, Bill Merkline hit this one out of the park. Rikondo's chest and his waist piece was used for some variants of the 1987 mail-away figure Starduster. On his arms, he has the rolled-up sleeves of that khaki shirt, and he has a green wristwatch on his left wrist. He has a patch on his left sleeve, which looks like a black shield with a line or a lightning bolt through it. Sources identify this as the patch for the U.S. Army 25th Infantry Division Rikondo. It doesn't look exactly like that patch, but it would make sense. That could be the source of Rikondo's name. On his waist piece, he has a brown belt, a highly detailed belt. He has pouches on the left and right side. Really nicely done belt buckle on that. Very nice, very fine details. 
And also we can see that his khaki shirt is tucked under that belt, and under the shirt we can see the beginning of his camouflage pattern. On his legs we have a dark green tiger stripe camouflage pattern on khaki trousers. Ricondo may have painted this camel pattern on his trousers himself. Most of his equipment seems to be customized. He has a pocket on his right leg, and on his left leg he has a black knife. Uh, he has khaki boot coverings over black boots. There are several variations of this camouflage pattern. On some figures it's brown, on other figures it's green. On some figures the lines are thick, on other figures the lines are thin. Here are my examples of the variations. Your Rakondo figure may look different. Rakondo is camouflaged for a grassy environment, such as a savanna, rather than a dense rainforest. His uniform is mostly tan with a mix of green and brown. Both Africa and Australia have such environments. This reinforces Rakondo's Australian influence. There are no wasted details on this figure. Every element is functional. Rakondo looks like like he's been in the jungle for some time, and he's carrying everything he needs to survive and to fight. Let's take a look at Rakondo's file card. On his file card, it has his faction as G.I. Joe. A portrait of Rakondo here, really nicely done. He is the jungle trooper. His code name is Rakondo. His file name is Daniel M. LeClaire. His primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is intelligence. Birthplace is Wheaton, Wisconsin, and his grade is E4. Though the character looks like he should be from Australia, Rakondo is from Wheaton, Wisconsin. Not a very jungly place. This paragraph says, Rakondo hates the cold. He loves hauling a rucksack through the bush and sweating through his camis. When he's in the jungle, he owns it. Anybody else is trespassing. Cadre member at Jungle Warfare Training Center. Qualified expert M16 Swedish K Grease Gun, M1911 A1 Auto Pistol, M79 Grenade Launcher. Rakondo hates the cold. Maybe that's why he got out of Wisconsin. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, A jungle is like some single gigantic hostile organism. It can sense when you fear or hate it, and it is wholly without mercy. When Rakondo steps into a jungle, it sings to him like a mother soothing a troubled child. That's pretty colorful. Rakondo is at home in the jungle. This is reflected in his comic book appearances. Taking a look at how Rakondo was used in G.I. Joe media, he had many appearances in the Sunbow animated series. He had the most exposure in the episode Jungle Trap. In that episode, Cobra kidnaps the inventor of a device that harnesses the power of molten lava. The Joes track Cobra to the jungle, where their health helicopters are shot down. The jungle location is convenient for showcasing Rakondo's skill. He takes the lead, guiding the team around booby traps and saves them from a rhinoceros. Although Rakondo is spotlighted in that episode, it really isn't about Rakondo. Rakondo made a fair number of appearances in the animated series, but he disappeared when the Sunbow series was cancelled. He didn't appear in the later Deke series. In the G.I. Joe comic book series, Rakondo had an inconsequential first appearance in issue number four, when the Joes were preparing to reopen the pit. Rakondo's real introduction was in issue number 38. Stalker, Gung Ho, Roadblock, and Ripcord were sent on a mission to Sierra Gordo to rescue Adele Burkhart, a scientist introduced in the first issue of the comic book series. When they arrive, they meet up with Rakondo, who had already been in country for months. He had befriended a local tribe called Tukaros. That story culminates in issue number 39, one of my favorite issues of the entire series. The Joes execute a daring plan to rescue Dr. Burkhart. In the melee, the Tukaros are killed by snipers. As the Joes escape through the jungle, the snipers pursue. Rakondo is ordered to drop back and cover their escape. When he returns, he's carrying two sniper rifles. He drops them into the river. Most of Rakondo's action is off-panel, perhaps because it would be too gruesome for a young audience. The implication is clear, though. Rakondo avenged his friends and eliminated the pursuing snipers. Rakondo had a few other appearances in the comic book series. He was in Special Missions number 2, but that story wasn't really about Rakondo. In fact, Rakondo got in the way at one point. At the end of that issue, a non Nazi war criminal is going to be executed, and the panels zoom in on Clutch's face, who has zero remorse.
course, about the fate of that Nazi guy. Looking at Rakondo overall, of course this is a top tier figure. I love everything about it. I love the colors. They didn't go with the obvious base green color. I love the camouflage. I love the hat. I love the rifle. I love the backpack. I love how Rakondo was depicted in the comic book. He was serious, smart, tough, and he took care of business. This is one figure where I don't have to look past any glaring mistakes. The paint applications are sparse, but every detail that seems like it should be painted is painted. The sculpting is crisp. The details are on point. He looks like he's been in the jungle for a while, living off the land and stalking the enemy. But he keeps his mustache trimmed. Hey, living in the wilderness is no excuse to be uncivilized. What a joy it has been to review Rakondo. If you enjoy the science fiction and fantasy elements of G.I. Joe, well, we'll be getting back to that. But Rakondo represents my G.I. Joe. This is a guy I could take on missions. He was ready. No red football jersey, no yellow jumpsuit, no nonsense. I actually have to cut myself off or I could talk about Rakondo for hours. Next week, we're going to look at something that isn't strictly realistic military, but it's still pretty good. Don't forget to find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon, and my website, hcc788.com. Now, I've got to get out of these woods before I get Poison Ivy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.